Next question is from Marissa Lift Repeat. What is going to be the next big worthwhile shift in fitness? Oh, good question. You know what? It's funny. Since I've been doing all these interviews for the book, mm -hmm. I've been interviewed now by several doctors. In fact, I was just yesterday, I was interviewed by uh, the author of Wheat Belly. Are you guys familiar with that book, Wheat Belly? It was like a bestseller. Right? I didn't read it, but I'm yeah. familiar with it. Right. So, and he has a group where people pay to listen to speakers. So in this group, I don't know how many hundreds of people were in there, and I'm talking about resistance training. He's been communicating this exact message for, and he was a cardiologist. He's been communicating the exact same message now for the past couple of years. And him and I got talking, and he says, you know, Sal, he goes, uh, the research around strength training or resistance training just didn't exist a couple decades ago. I've talked about this before on the show. He said, more recently, Research is coming out where they're studying resistance training and they're looking at it for, for longevity purposes. How does it affect brain health? How does it affect heart health? How does it affect vis visceral body fat and diabetes? And he goes, the research coming out is crazy. I think the next big thing, and this is what I bet on when I wrote that book, is going to be strength training. Now, not in the fitness space. We've all known this for a long time. But I think the medical community now is starting to come mm. to it and start to push it. I think over the next 10 years, we're going to see... In terms of prescribing it? Yeah. I think over the next 10 years, we're going to see strength training be a thing that everybody talks about, the average person. So that's what I would predict is the next yeah, be great. kind of big thing. Yeah. It's a little more general than the way I was thinking. I was thinking a little more specific. I think that glucose monitors are going to become way more popular. I think you're going to see, and I think it's going to help a lot of people that have like diabetes and stuff. And it's going to, uh, it's going to unlock a lot of things nutritionally for people that are trying to figure it out. I mean, we were just off air having a, a, a conversation um, with Melissa and she was um, from Whole30 and she was, she's using it right now. And we were talking about how she, get, she could eat uh, oatmeal. She was telling me like she could eat a whole big old bowl of oatmeal no spike whatsoever from it, but then she has a little bit of sweet potato mm -hmm. and she gets a massive spike from it. So I think there's such an individual variance in how people react to certain foods. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, we are very yeah. clueless to that. And I think that is going to unlock a lot of potential nutrition. I could get behind that. I, I find it so valuable to get more accurate information that, that pertains to the individual. And I think, you know, the more we can kind of uh, you know, hone in on that uh, nutritionally will uh, really provide people with a lot of good, valuable, you know, things that they can then apply to their their planning and their organizing of their shopping list and everything. Yeah, I would like for that to be a, a big thing. I, you know, I think it's extremely valuable. I'm, I'm very fascinated. The challenge is going to be, you know, are people going to do anything with this information? That's always going to be the challenge. Right? Well, that's always with tech. Right? Anything, yeah, right? That's, I mean, because it'll start out as they're trying to make it cool, and then you know, later on, people will be like, okay, what, what's the value here? I mean, it's the it's the same debate that we made with the whole mirror and tonal thing, right? Yep. Because I mean, that thing could be extremely valuable too. Totally. But, but will people use it, and will they use it correctly, and will they be consistent with it, or will it be just that much harder because it's in their house and it's easier to say no to it and not do it? So. You know, a lot of these tools. So I don't know. I think the the glucose monitor, because it's something that they you literally stick it on you and don't have to think about it. And then all you'd have to do is basically check your app to get mm -hmm. the feedback on what, what you ate. To me, uh, that's going to help a lot of people out. And I, I'm interested well, to see where that goes. I think, too, in... in I think that this was starting to become a trend before the pandemic and everything else, like where we, we saw like unique, like uh, little gyms that, that were popping up that were just recovery based. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was getting excited about that, but then, you know, all this hit. And so it was like, you know, retail took a massive, uh, you know, lump to the face, but uh, I could still see, you know, some traction there in terms of like, there's just a, a big community of people that are over training, don't realize it yet. You you know, once they kind of step into something like that, that introduces them to what a full recovery focus would provide them, I think it would be interesting and, and valuable. 